Um, before we start, was any was anyone else, did anyone else have any other testimony or anything before we start? That was it. Good. No more announcements. That's what I meant to say. Sarah, you got something? Okay. Um, we were talking about the blood, and this is a song that I used to sing um, years and years ago. And I just want to read it to you. In letters of crimson, God wrote his love with the same hands that suffered and bled, giving all that he had to give, a message so easily read. I love you, I love you, that's what Calvary said. I love you, I love you, I love you, written in red. Down through the ages, God wrote his love on a hillside so long, long ago. For you and for me, Jesus died, and love's greatest story was told. I love you, I love you, that's what Calvary said. I love you, I love you, I love you, written in red. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood the blood of Jesus. I love you, I love you, that's what Calvary said. I love you, I love you, I love you, written in red. Thank you, Sarah, thank you, thank you. Ready? All right, let's just pray. Father, we just come to you today, Lord, as willing vessels, Lord, to hear your word, to study your word, and Lord, to practice your word. We just thank you that you give us the opportunity to do this, Lord, in this building, Lord. We thank you that the Spirit is here. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to talk about being saved. A little different spin. Um, now, I want everyone to honestly answer if you've seen this movie and don't feel like you're going to get chastised. Braveheart. Anyone saw the movie Braveheart with Mel Gibson? Okay, a little gory movie, pretty rough. But there's a scene in that movie that came back to me that I remembered seeing and, and when I thought about this message. And I was going to share it a while back and didn't get the opportunity, so I put it on the shelf, but today's the opportunity. Well, there's a scene in that movie where he's married, but the English army kills his wife. So, they're at the burial site. The girl's father and mother over here. Now, they got married in secret, so there was a whole story behind it and the reasons why, but I'm not going to go into that. But anyway, at the burial site, they're there, they're about to, to um, perform the ceremony, and that's over. And here's what happens. Mel Gibson, and the character is William Wallace, but he looks over at the father. And you can see his mind, oof. Well, he walks over to the father. Gets in front of him, looks him right in the eye, and then bends down to his knees and bows his head. Now, when you see that, you're going, he's asking for mercy, forgiveness. And I saw that. But what I also saw, he was expecting some punishment. He was there saying, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? But if you take my head off, so be it. He was expecting a punishment also. So many times when we come to, to Christ to be saved, we come, I'm tired of this life, or I want to change. I want you to save me, Lord, but see, I know there's a punishment coming. So many people expect a punishment. And I saw that in that scene. I wish I could I had it on the video. I didn't work to show it to you. But it was so powerful how that I paralleled that into, you know, people are just, 
you know, I'd like to be saved, but uh, uh, there's just something holding them back. Now, I know you don't hear that in a lot of churches. Well, what do you mean you saved, you expect a punishment? Think about it. My life as I live it now is going to have to stop. Some of the things I do are going to change. God's going to punish me for the things I've done. If I become saved and have to follow Christ, he's going to punish me. That's their attitude about it. Why do you think there's so much resistance in people's emotions about, well, I'm not quite ready. I'm not, that's the answer you get. Or you, have you, or you say, well, I'm just not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. I don't know if I can accept the weight of that. So keep that on your, on your mind for a minute. People come to get saved, but also expect punishment. Willie, can you put Matthew 18, 11 on, please? Matthew 18, 11. For the Son of Man came to save from the penalty of eternal death that which was lost. The Son of Man came to save that which was lost. Save him from what? The penalty of eternal death. You know, when you're saved, when you get saved, you're saved from a lot of things. <laughs> and if you get saved and you really go in, a lot of things can go along with what I'm going to be saved from. But the main thing you're saved from is that eternal death. See, we're a spirit being. Our spirits will never die. You're going to either have eternal life through Christ or eternal death. Eternal life or eternal death. That's the one you're going to get. Which one are you going to get? Now, people say a lot of times, and even preach, you know, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. Well, that's true, but give us the meat. Tell us the real story. I mean, hell is just a domain. Well, when I die, I'm, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Okay, that's good. That's your domain. But see, while you're in heaven, heaven, you're enjoying eternal life. See, think about it as a house. Well, I'm going to that house, but because I'm destined for that house, I get to enjoy the benefits of what I'm bringing to that house. I'm bringing my eternal life into that house. Or you're going to go... That house over there, I'm going to bring eternal death. So think about that. It's always, well, you know, you don't want to go to hell, do you? Well, no. But what does that mean? So when you think about it, let's see. If I don't get saved, you're telling me my spirit's going to live forever, but if I'm not saved, it's going to be tormented. It's never going to have a relationship with God. It's going to have eternal death. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Forget about the hell part. Think about the spiritual part. Your spirit is alive. Hell is just a domain. Heaven is the domain. What are you bringing? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to take your spirit? Your spirit's going somewhere. So when people think, well, you know, I want to get punished, you know, I, he's going to bring punishment on me. How can being saved be punishment if what you're being saved from is eternal death? Right. I don't want eternal death. I want eternal life. So when you're preaching the gospel, preach the gospel. Yeah, you, yeah, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. But let me tell you what you're going to endure if you don't get saved. Eternal death. 
What is that? Separation from God. Separation from God. Eternal death. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 1.10. First Thessalonians 1.10 And how you look forward to and await the coming of his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who personally rescues and delivers us out of and from the wrath, bringing punishment which is coming upon the impotent, and draws us to himself, investing us with all the privileges and rewards of the new life in Christ the Messiah. Again, Jesus, who personally rescues and delivered us out of and from the wrath. So, opposite of thinking you're going to be punished, you're getting delivered from punishment. From punishment. You mean if I accept Christ, I'll escape the punishment? Yes, absolutely. Now, here's where the confusion comes in. See, when you become born again and you want to follow Christ, there comes some accountability. There comes a need for some maturing, a need to get off the floor, stop the milk, and eat some of the meat. And I've got to walk accordingly. That's their punishment. In their mind, that's their punishment. You mean I can't be exactly what I want to be? I've got to stop being what I want to be and be what God wants me to be? Oh, that's hard now. That's the punishment. That's the real punishment that's in the back of their mind. God's not... He didn't come... To, Jesus didn't shed that blood we sang about to punish you. <laughs> yeah, or make you do something. He shed that blood to let you live. To let you live and be fruitful and be a willing vessel for him. So the punishment we have is the, well, I can't hang out with that guy I like to hang out with sometimes anymore. I mean, that's fun. Or, you mean I can't go do some of the things I like to do once in a while? Or, you mean I can't do something that might offend my brother? You mean I got a, something that might not be bad, but I just, uh, oh, man. Maybe I'll get saved later. I'm not ready. That's where it comes into play. It's not the punishment. It's their own punishment in their mind of the life they have to change. But again, we don't know our last breath. So you keep on waiting until you're ready. And you'll get the fruit of that. Eternal death. We want things we want. And unless you're willing to change that, that's all you're going to get. And that ain't nothing in God's eyes. He's got so much more for us, so much more planned, so much more available. Will, if you'll put up Romans 5, 9. Oh, excuse me. Romans 5, 9. Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we shall be saved by him from the indignation and wrath of God? Saved from the indignation and wrath of God. Verse 10. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin's dominion. 
through his resurrection life. Daily delivered from sin's dominion. It doesn't sound like punishment. It sounds like something I want. I want to be delivered daily. Daily. Like I said, everything, he makes things new daily. 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 Verse 11. Not only so, but we also rejoice and exultantly glory in God in his love and perfection through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received and enjoy our reconciliation. So there we go. See, again, we got to remember we were enemies. We were God's enemy. Man fell. Ripped the relationship and became his enemy. God never became our enemy. Man became God's enemy. See, a lot of people in this world think God's mad at them. No, -uh. man became mad at God. See, I will disobey you, Lord, but I don't expect the I don't expect the, the consequences. Oh, consequences come with disobedience and obedience. If it takes a few knocks to figure it out, obey. It's the better way. <laughs> but man is the enemy of God. It's not reverse. So there was a hostility. If you're an enemy, you're a hostile. That's a hostile environment. So something has to be done to end the hostility. And God took care of that. He sent his son to shed the blood we sang about again. To end the hostility. God took the initiative to achieve the goal to be reconciled back to man. Put an end to the hostility. Is what he did through the blood. So we're saved by his life. And what is God, you know, his life? It's an unending life. It's his ministry. The resurrected Christ has a, it's a ministry of his resurrection. It keeps going and going and going. So Christ physically came, shed his blood, physically died. But that didn't kill his spirit. He resurrected and lives. Why is he living? Why is he living? To keep us alive. To keep us saved. To hold us together. To make us stay on the straight path. Gives us hope. See, when you're in, a, when you're in a, a mindset that, well, I can't be saved. Well, I'm not quite ready. I'm not good enough yet. I haven't, I've done too many bad things. Uh, I don't come to church. Um, I don't know how to ask to be saved. I, uh, you get bogged down. But if you'll look those people in the eye and tell them, let me tell you something about the choice that you need to make. It's not about how good you are. It's not about what you've done or didn't do. But it's about your eternity. Your eternity. See, you think your last breath, it's over. It ain't over. That spirit being is going to continue. And you are going to indeed enjoy an eternal life or an eternal death. Again, forget about the dominion about where it is. That's bad enough in itself. But the, the, the more torturous thing is that eternal death. That spirit being. You can't escape, you can't escape your own spirit. 
That's why the choice to live is through Christ. To enjoy the eternal life that he's given. I'm looking for that. If that's punishment, I'll take some of it. You know, if that's what you mean by punishment, give me some. Can I get a double portion? In fact, just set me up there and I'll just stay in that room the whole time. I want to be there. So when we minister to people and we, we are talking, we got to get to the root. Let, let's, get off the, the, let's get off the, well, the normal heaven and hell talk. Let's get down to the, where, listen, buddy, you've got a spirit that lives in that body. And there's two things that spirit's going to do. Swim in death or swim in life. And you got to let them know that's what's going to happen. Being saved, being saved, being saved is the way to eternal life. Not making that choice will get you eternal death. And just like I said in that movie in the beginning, you could, I want your mercy, Lord, I want your forgiveness, but I'm expecting you to take my head off. I'm expecting you to punish me. He didn't come to punish, man. <laughs> he come to love you. He come to wrap his arms around you and live with you daily. So intimately entwined with you that you can't escape him once you accept him. But again, we, we put our mindset on it. Again, well, I can't really enjoy the full benefit of being saved, whatever that means. <laughs> I, I really, you know, yeah, I'm a, I, yeah, I'll get saved, but I, you know, I really won't get anything from it. I, I, maybe I'll go to heaven. No, wait a minute. You will enjoy eternal life. Life starts flowing. Life. I mean, you're either living or dying, folks. No, you want punishment? Just keep on dying. But you living or dying. Everything we do is going to bring around life or death. Everything. Every choice you make, every word you speak, every non-decision you don't make. I mean, you you got to realize that everything, everything has purpose. Everything has purpose. If it doesn't, let's just fall asleep and forget about it and never wake back up. Let's just be done. Or have the party like Pastor Bob says, let's just whoop it up in here. But everything, everything has purpose. So, even going back to when we each got saved, if you did it and you expected somehow that punishment, get with God in a quiet moment and say, God, I have listened. Woo, I thought I had it right, but when I asked you to save me, I meant that, but see, I had, I had, I had a punishment expectation. You don't know how much that may be hindering your relationship. See, you said you were sold out to me some, but you ain't quite there, but see, I can't move in you yet, but see, you still thinking I'm going to lay the hammer down on you, and I don't want to lay the hammer down on you, I just want you to walk with me. God ain't got no stringent rule book. I mean, he just wants you to walk with him. And if you walk with God, you won't do the things you shouldn't do. And if you do slip up, you know what to do. First what? Just take care of it. He's right there holding your hand just waiting for you to get back up. Well, come on. He's not going to drag you, though. You want to make the choice to get back up and live. But so many people just get stuck, mired in the mud. And you know the truth, a lot of times it's because they want to hold on to that old life. Listen, I'll give you look, the recipe book. I'll give you these recipes, but I ain't going to give you these. I mean, how could I give you those? If I gave you those, they wouldn't be mine. Hmm. 
I mean, you expect me to give that up? Well, no, you can hold on to it. What enjoyment is that? Well, that's my recipe. Well, if you don't cook it for no one to eat it, it don't mean nothing. Open the jar up, put it on the table, let's get it. But see, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. It's not, you know, listen, we're still in this human body. That's gonna, we're going to be working it out for a while until we get out of this physical body. But don't hang it up in your mind as a punishment or a, I'm not quite there. You know, I'm with God, but I'm just not quite good enough to be right up next to him, you know, shoulder to shoulder. You're missing it. You're missing it. Listen, one of his own disciples, you know, was going, there he is, go get him. He knew that. He didn't tell him, get out of here, Judas. I know what you're going to do. Just don't hang out with me no more. Uh Uh-uh. He's here. Let me put it this way. He came for the sinner. But once you become his, he's still there for you. He didn't just forget about you and say, well, I got you now. I'm going to go into the center. No, that's why when you accept Christ, he becomes, he gets in you. He, he is invited into your being. That's spiritual. See, some people get hung up. Well, you know, I accepted Christ and, you know, that was fun and good, but I ain't nothing happening. You know? I'll see the other people getting saved. They're dancing, jumping around. They're having a good old time. Everything's flowing for them. <laughs> Hitting home? <laughs> That's how we think. What about me, Lord? I've been, we clean the building. You know, I preach sometimes. Boy, I cut the grass. I do this. I, what about me? What about you? What about you? When you walk by the God that's down in the dumps, do you stop and share my word with him? Why are you expecting so much from me when I can't expect that little bit from you? See, being saved didn't just, well, could I get to go to heaven? If, you want, if, if you're saved, the gospel needs to be right here. The agape love needs to be right here. The I'm a willing vessel needs to be right here. The I believe every word is 100% true needs to be right here. The I would rather die sharing your word than to live and to be quiet needs to be right here. You know when Pastor Bob asks who's ready to go and, you know, I think he raised his hand and I raised my hand and maybe two other people do. I'm not boasting about that. I'm ready, folks. God's going to work in me that if I stop breathing now, great. Now, people go, oh, gosh, you can't leave your family. you got young kids. You can't go. God is their father above me. If he can't take care of them, what am I doing? you got to get this down in your, in your being. So when I do that, I'm not just doing that because, you know, hey, Pastor Bob's got his hand. Let me raise my hand. Uh-uh. When I raise it, I mean it. I'm ready. I'm looking for him. I want to be with him. But I'm going to do what I need to do while I'm here. But when my time comes, I'm ready. See, that's what we mean. Are you ready? That don't mean you go out there and jump in front of the car and die. But are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? And if you're ready, then do the things today that we need to be doing to prove that you're ready. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will not back down. I've been saved by his grace. And his love is sufficient for me. Every other expectation doesn't mean anything to me. I have failures. And I have victories. But those are in the human aspect. 
in the spiritual, I am a victorious warrior. More than a conqueror. Not only that, I'm a co-heir with Christ himself. Co-heir, people. When you're a co-heir, it doesn't say on the sheet, well, now Jesus gets 90% and you get 10. It's an equal partnership, an equal relationship. That ain't punishment. You mean if I get saved, I'm a co-heir? How is that punishment? See, that's a treasure, man. That's eternal life. You get placed in a position of authority. Your inheritance is written down, sealed. That's a great thing to be saved. <laughs> Co-heir. Think about that. Co-heir with Christ. Here we go back to the human. Well, you know, that sounds good on paper, but you know, that, what does that mean? I don't get all that. I mean, God's God and Jesus was Jesus. I'm just me. If you've got that mentality, hold your breath, stop for a second, <laughs> and exhale. Because that's the wrong mentality. It's got nothing to do with your circumstances. Remember, so many of us let our circumstances tell our story. We are the worst book in the world if we write down our circumstances our, as our story. It's horrible. In today's world, it would be a bestseller. People would just love to feed on, on your ugly circumstance. But see, you are not the circumstance. It's just like when Christ was on that cross and that blood and the scourge. That wasn't pretty. But that was the circumstance. That was what his body went through. But see, as you see past that, you see the victory in that. See? Well, you know, that's that guy over there. He's, he's unemployed. He's a drug addict. You know, he's, got, he's just mess. He's nothing. And that's coming from Christians. That's coming from Christians. Forget what the world's saying. We Christians in here. I hope everyone in here is a Christian. But that's what Christians say about that guy. Forget about him. Someone asked me one time, well, more than someone. <laughs> I've got a little rowdy, rebellious family bloodline. My own wife asked me sometimes this. How can you love them? <laughs> I can't help but to love them. I hate the things they do. I just, eh, woo, my blood. Frank, you got that thing, go beeper, it'll beep real quick. <laughs> but I got to love them. Not just for my benefit, but for theirs. See, they already feel, they feel like the worm in the cabbage patch. And all it takes is for me to come along and go, yep, you are, and ruin them. Right. Totally destroy them. I won't do that. I can't do that. But yet, we can talk about the strange guy that we don't know. Eh, whatever. But see, there's a love for him. Not his actions. Not his circumstance but for the person that God made in his own image. See, it's easy to look at the guy that's straight and got everything good. You know, hey, 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 that's a good guy over there. Might be the worst sinner you've ever met in your life, has no relationship with God. In fact, you might use God's name in vain so much you'd have your head spin off. So it gets back to the root of who you're going to be in this thing. Lord, am I saved just to go to heaven? Or am I saved just to keep from going to hell? Or am I saved to walk this life with you? To walk out your message? 
to share your gospel. To have that brave heart. To be willing to speak your word. And not back down. To be willing to next time someone says, are you ready to go? Yes, I am. I'm ready. And if you're ready to do that, then you're willing and ready to do the things here while you do have this time for his sake. Just do it. Just share. Just share. Listen, Facebook's out there. I mean, they're sharing all kind of stuff on there. If you ain't been on there and you want to get enlightened about what people are sharing, just read one. Listen, I can take about 15 minutes at a time, and I'm done for a month and a half. <laughs> Rachel will tell you about that. Once in a while, I'll go on just to kind of check, and I'm out. I got to go. Can't, got to get out of there. But my wife takes the opportunity to share the gospel on it. And Michelle does, and I've seen other people, you know, it's, well, you know, we ate a sandwich today. I saw this movie. Um... <laughs> You know, the guy down the street ran over the dog. Um, you know, his wife left him too, by the way, but I didn't say that. You know, you know, all this stuff. They can share all that stuff, all that junk. But if you said, will you share about your saving grace? Will you share about when you came to Christ? <sighs> well, how can I put, I mean, someone might get offended. They're already offended. <laughs> so just share about it. Share about it. I'll share mine. I was 11. And I said, Lord, I don't want to go down the path that my other brothers and sisters are. But I'm destined for it. I'm the youngest in the family. Lord, I don't want the sins of my father to affect me. Lord, I want you to save me. And I want you to lead me to a life that's fruitful. I don't, I don't want this junk. People always go, well, Charles, how did you go so straight and they went so crooked? I said, because I asked Christ to help me. Sure, I have a little fortitude, but left on alone, that'd go away in a day or two. You get around the wrong crowd. You know, <laughs> you stay around the wrong crowd, you'll go do what the crowd's doing. I don't care how strong you are. Why do you see these pastors and, and heads of the church and all, all these things, they fall? You put yourself in the wrong situation, the wrong environment, you will fall. You will fall, right? Flesh is flesh. So make a decision about what environment do I want to be in? What character do I want to display? Do I want to be a person of integrity or a person of deceit? See, let's break it down. Yeah, when no one's looking, are you going to be a person of character or deceit? You know, yeah, you're a Christian. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Well, uh, you know, well, um, what do you feel about this? Oh, well, I f no, I don't feel nothing about it. Let me tell you what God says about that. You want to you be a true Christian? Just tell them what the scriptures say. It's got nothing about how you feel. It's got nothing to do about the circumstance. It's got something to do with what God says about his word. So being saved. Yeah, I want to be saved, but I expect some punishment. No, brother, sister, let me tell you what you're going to get. You're going to get saved. And then you're going to have a father who molds you into what he wants you to be. And that's going to be some discipline. It's going to be some correction. It's going to be some, I got to leave these things out of my life and put some new things in. Now, if you consider that punishment, go ahead. But if you'll just go on through that, the reward's coming. The reward's coming. The reward is coming. And I believe in telling the truth. I like, uh, you know, with our kids, we, I tell them the truth. Yeah. You know, 
I, I, I'll, I've said this in here before, but I remember Jacob was three or four, and I got in his face. Jacob, I'm your dad, and that's your mama, but that's my wife. You don't get between me and my wife. Now, some people would go, oh, can you believe he said that? I do. I meant it. And you know what? When you see these marriages that crumble after the kids are grown and gone, that's why. Because that man wasn't willing to look in that little face and say, let me tell you something, boy. That's my wife. You ain't between me and my wife. Now, see, that's the gospel. See, you're telling your child the gospel when you tell them that. And if you haven't done that and you're a parent with a young child, do it. Even if they're 25, go back and do it. Let me tell you something, something. I didn't tell you something a while back I should have, but I'm going to set the record straight. See? You got a marriage that's going south? Get there with your kids and tell them how this thing is going to go forward. You know what I mean? Get serious about this. Ain't no, this ain't no Mickey Mouse program. This is life. This is truth. I want my kids saved, but see, I can't save my kids. But if we feed them the truth, just like the, the, they have done, Jacob and Josh, I'm, 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 I'm calling on him. I, I want Christ in my life. Now, a lot of people go, well, they're too young to know the difference. Try them. Try them. They can work your whole computer system. And if you believe they can do that, why can't you believe they can accept Christ? So, yeah, you want to believe they can do everything else, but when the meat is on the table of, oh, they don't know about God. Yeah, they do. They know more about God than we do. Because they don't get in their own way. And we do. A little reflection today, eh? <laughs> yeah. So... You know, it, you got to set your mind to structure yourself. And don't expect to get it right on day one. I ain't getting it right still. My wife corrected me the other day so harshly. It was very nice words. No, it's fine. She told me something very profound, but I needed to hear it. To, I needed to hear it. No, I don't want to tell y'all, but. Well, no, I will tell you because I think it's a good message. Let me tell you what it was. I'm a hard worker. When I get to work, I do not stop. But now when I'm not working, I like to go into a whoosh, lazy zone. And she said to me the other day, <laughs> it's just on tape, right? <laughs> you ready? Successful people do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. Now, I didn't say a word back. <laughs> Successful people do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. Now listen, she wasn't mad at me, but look, sometimes you get a little out of character and you got to be drawn back over. Yeah, yay Rachel. But I needed to hear that. Yeah, because you can get caught up in your own world. You can be so busy, you so busy. <laughs> you just busy. What are you busy about? I forgot. I'm so busy. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> so you got to be brought back over. But see, I love my wife. My wife loves me. She can tell me that and I ain't mad at her. Because what she told me is the truth. Get up. Yeah, get up. It's like my dad said. My dad never told me what to be in life. But he said, son, if you're willing to get up in the morning and go do something, you'll be successful. That's right. So are you willing to get up in the morning yeah. and go do something? Yeah. I'm not just talking about your profession or how you're going to hang out with your friends at the beach. I'm talking about are you willing to get up 
and go do something for the Lord? Are you willing to get up and make a commitment to him to say, I am yours? And because I am yours, Christ, you're mine. We belong to each other. See, you belong to him. This ain't no God that's way over there and you just get to talk to. You're, he's in you. And you're in him, an intimate relationship. What's the punishment? Separation from that intimate relationship. If you don't choose him, if you don't get saved, you get the separation. I don't want to live. Well, fact, it's not living. It's dying. I don't want to die. I want to live. I want my spirit to live with Christ. I don't want it to die. So we got to remember how you're going to structure your life. You're going to structure it to succeed or to fail. I'm not talking about momentary failures. And success. I'm talking about as you're walking down that line, all the way down, am I succeeding? Am I succeeding? Am I succeeding? Yes. We're not talking about the momentary failure. Look at your billionaires in this world. You think they just woke up one day and had a billion dollars sitting in their house? They failed over and over and over again to get success. They had to walk through trials. But now here's the difference. You can walk through every trial in the world, but if you don't stop and learn something from it, you're just going to keep on walking through trials. That's why when you get built up, you build this inner man up, trials shouldn't affect you anymore. They should just bounce right off of you. See what I'm saying? I don't get, like I shared the other day, I don't shake no more. I don't get shaken. I'm a normal man. I have fear, but I don't get shaken. I don't, I'm on solid ground. If I lose everything tomorrow, I'm still on solid ground. If I gain everything tomorrow, I'm still on solid ground. Just put yourself on solid ground. I'm saved. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, but that ain't it. Now I need to go out there and walk this thing out. I need to go out there and share his word. I need to minister to people. I need to pray for people. I need to establish my own house. Oh. I mean, that means getting tough in my own house? Yes. Setting the order. God made the order. It's not complicated. Just look it up. You can find it. Here's how you set your house up. You want to be successful? Just walk like this with me. Walk with me. Your circumstance is not you. If the circumstance was it, when we saw Christ all beat up, unrecognizable, we thought, well, it's over. That's it. There's no saving grace now. Look at him. He's dying. But that wasn't the end of the story, man. That was not the, that was the beginning. The beginning. The beginning. So be established in his word. Be established in your faith. Don't matter what part you're at at a maturity level, but just believe in your faith. If you can just believe in your faith. See, you can say, I have faith, but yet how strongly do you believe in your faith? Do you really believe your faith? So establish your faith. And recognize your relationship. He has no son or daughter he doesn't want us to be with every moment of the day. He has no favorites. There's no favorites. There's no favorites. The world wants to think, well, you know, Billy Graham, you know, he's the favorite and you're just this guy. No, -uh. there's no favorites with him. There's different rewards. That's a whole different story. But there's no favorites with God. Well, there is a favorite. You're a favorite. You're a favorite, you're a favorite, you're a favorite, you're a favorite. And he's looking for you. And he wants you to come to him. But there's one way to do that. By freely, by your own will, I believe you came, lived and breathed on this planet. Not just the, listen, you got to know that he walked this planet as a human being. 
and shed his blood and then was resurrected. We can't explain it, but you got to believe that. And if you believe that and you've acknowledged that, then you are saved and you're not going to get the punishment. You're going to get the reward, the eternal life. Eternal life, the reward. So when you run across people in your daily path and they want to know about this being saved stuff, and yeah, how, isn't there a lot of punishment? Oh yeah, there's some punishment, but it ain't with being saved. It's with being unsaved. Glory comes with being saved. So tell them and be willing to get the scriptures out and share it with them. Don't beat them up so harsh on the first go around. Maybe on the third, give it to them one good time. But just tell them in love. Give them your own personal testimony. That's why you got to believe in your own testimony. That's what I'm saying. you got to go back and recognize, Lord, now when I came to you and got saved, I expected a punishment. I repent of that. I got the reward. I got justified. I got reconciled. I was your enemy, but now I'm your friend. I am a friend of God. Rachel loves that song. Wait a minute. I, I can't be a friend of God. God's God. No, you are a friend of God. A friend of God. Because he, he reconciled. He took the hostility that we created out of the way and put an open door policy up. Come on in and share with me and love with me. Through Christ's blood. Being saved is not being punished. Being saved gives you eternal life. And if you'll grasp that, your whole countenance will change. You will look at the sunny side instead of the the dark days. You'll look at the positive instead of the negative. You'll see the life that's awaiting that man over there versus his death. And then you'll be bold enough to go over there and tell him. And tell him with confidence and boldness and authority. God's given us the authority. Pastors and, and, and deacons and all, we're just, that's just positions. But we're all ministers of his word. If you're saved, you need to be, you know what, I saw this job description, now I'm a minister of his word. Wow. Be willing to be a minister of his word. Share it with the people. Being saved is not a punishment. It is a great inheritance. It's beautiful. I'm thankful it was at a young age for me because it could have went south quickly. And with how bulldoggy I am sometimes in my mind, if I'd have went down that road, I'd have went all before it. And I would have missed out on this relationship here. I would have missed out on that relationship. That man over there and his wife and my sister-in-law, my son, missed it all. Oh, I'd be out there having a good time in my own mind and be miserable. Horrible miserable. All in here. But I just thank God that he saved me when he did. And then I freely accepted that saving grace. And I counted it all as true. When you count it as true, watch how your life changes. But if you try to hold back and don't count it all as true, and just do 85.6%, you're going to get 85.6%. Go for the 100%. Go for it all. See what he's got for you. It's awesome. I'm speaking, and I'm not even speaking in present. I'm, I'm always here, but I'm always down the road. What you got next for me, God? What are we going to do? What you bringing to me? What opportunities? Just believe in it. You know the promotion is coming, so you got something great to look forward to anyway. So just go for it. Be ready to tell people what it really is about being saved. You are escaping the punishment, not getting the punishment. Thank you.